I'm talking about Sony a6300. It is a beloved camera and let me tell you, not only it takes amazing pictures, but it also generates super sharp 4K videos using Sony's picture profiles. Therefore, it is really popular among videographers. If you have one, is this still relevant in 2022 or it's time for you to upgrade? But if you're trying to get one of these bad boys, should you get it? Considering it's six years old or rather opting for some alternatives. Let's take a closer look, shall we? And before we really get into the video, I just want to tell you one thing. So many of you are missing my videos and you're texting me like, oh, when is the new video being dropped? I drop videos every single week. So if you don't want to miss any of my future videos, make sure you hit that notification bell and you will simply get notified whenever a new video is uploaded. So when it comes to photo capabilities, this camera is amazing, just like any other A6000 series cameras from Sony. It has the same 24 megapixel sensor, the APS-C CMOS sensor, and it's actually the same for the older and newer cameras. And it just takes really nice pictures. So if you're someone who's casual shooter and not going into professionals, then it's totally fine for you to use this camera for photos. And it takes just great photos. I mean, just look at these. There is plenty of resolution, so you can scale it up, you can zoom in, you can print, you can use it on social media, wherever you want. If you're not going into professional area, then I think it is totally fine to use this camera as your main camera. And besides that, as with all the Sony a6000 cameras, this one also has the uh, E-mount, which means that you are able to use one of more than 200 uh, Sony Tamron, Viltrox, Sigma and, and so on lenses, which means that you are really have a really wide uh, variety of using the lenses on, on this camera. Besides that, um, it has pretty decent viewfinder. It has um, 11 frames per second uh, burst, which is pretty, pretty, pretty well. The camera also has a built-in wireless and you have a tilting screen. It is not completely going up, so it only goes like this and you also have a weather sealed body, which is really good if you wanna shoot in um, rainy weather outside, just make sure that your lens is also weather sealed. Otherwise, you're gonna have problems and always remember to cover all of these um, little hot shoes and all the other things in order for you to not to damage the camera. It does not have the Bluetooth and it does not have the NFC, um, but it has have the built-in wireless, so you can still connect and use all the Imagine Edge apps and so on. So that's pretty cool. However, this camera is not for photographers. I mean, it is never intended to be for photographers because it costs more than Sony a6000 because of several reasons. First of all, it shoots 4K video and it's actually downscaled from 6K. So you get a really nice resolution. The camera also has picture profiles like S-Log2 and HLG and so on, a Cine2 and Cine4, I believe, uh, HLG, I think he had, maybe not. Um, so you get these picture profiles, which means that you can color grade your footage so much better, which also means that you can get a higher dynamic range in your photos, and that just helps you um, generate really nice videos. Um, and besides that, you, you also have 120 uh, frames per second slow motion in full HD, not in 4K. In 4K, you can only shoot 30 frames per second, but nevertheless, that allows you to have super slow motion and a camera like Sony a6000 does not have that. So as you understand, this is really meant for uh, video shooters. It also has a mic port on the side uh, and you also get 100 megabit bitrate, where on Sony a6000, for example, you get only 50 megabits. So yeah, uh, you can also use this as a webcam. Some of the drawbacks that this camera has regarding the video capabilities, it doesn't have the IBIS or in-body image stabilization. There is a limit on the time recording, which is 30 minutes, if I'm not mistaken. It doesn't have the touchscreen like the Sony a6400 has, 
and it does not have the animal eye autofocus, but it does have human eye autofocus. And I can tell you that the image comes out really sharp. Although you must remember that it's an 8-bit camera, so that means the color grading is gonna be a bit tricky. Uh, it's not a 10-bit, but still uh, the sharpness is there. And for a beginners or intermediates, I think this is a pretty good option. Talking about alternatives, if you are a, a photographer, for example, I don't think there's worth spending you the extra money on getting this 4K uh, capability and mic port and so on if you only focus on photography. So in that case, stick with Sony a6000 or upgrade to 6100 or if you want to go to the full frame, go with a7C. However, if you're a vi videographer, you can totally get this camera if you find a really good deal and if you find uh, used one because I don't think you can buy um, a new ones anymore because they're discontinued. If you have a bit more money, I would recommend you to go with either Sony a6100. There, the only difference is that you don't get picture profiles. So you still get 4K video, you get mic port and, and touch screen and eye animal focus and all the goodies. Doesn't have picture profiles. Maybe that's a deal breaker for a lot of the people out there. If you want that stabilization and all the goodies, go for Sony ZV-E10. And again, if you want image stabilization and you don't wanna use the gyroscopic data and Catalyst Browse from Sony, you can go with Sony A6600, which is a, a APS-C camera. That means your lenses will be cheaper. However, if you wanna go in the full frame, again, A7C or A7 III, those are really good budget options. Uh, to step in in the full frame, but remember the lenses are going to be more expensive. All right, my friends, that is it for me in this video. I'll see you all in the next one. Keep on creating.